Hey guys, TGKS Productions. In this Red Dead Online video, I have a top 5 PvP and PvE tips for beginning players in Red Dead Online. Now I say beginners because the, mo the majority of these tips in this video that I'm going to be giving uh, probably most regular Red Dead Online players I utilize these tips already in PvP and PvE. I would say these tips are going to be most beneficial to beginning players. I'm sure that even if you're a regular player, you can still benefit from this video um, in some way, but I would say this video would be the most beneficial to beginners. Uh, personally, these are tips that I have sort of derived from my own experience in combat and read that online over the past year, year and a half. So, you know, this is, you know, these tips are from my personal experience, but I can guarantee you, like I said, the, you know, I've learned these tips over the past year and a half just from being, you know, involved with combat and Red Dead Online. So I can assure you that you will find success with these tips. Um, I'm not going to guarantee that you're going to, you know, have 100% success all the time. You know, nothing in statistics is 100%. But I can assure you that if you, you know, if you take advantage of the tips that I'm giving you in this video regarding, you know, PvP and PvE, you will definitely be guaranteed to have more success. That I will. 100% guarantee or at least 99.9% .9 guarantee so the first tip I have here is defensive mode Now, defensive mode is pretty much if you double click left on the d-pad you open up this menu and you go down to online options it's the last option there you'll see you have player style you'll see I am in defensive mode essentially defensive mode is probably the one that's the least related to it's not even related to PvE but probably the least related to PvP but it still involves PvP but essentially right here it says defensive mode prevents lock on and reduces damage take from other players missions without player conflict are prioritized essentially um, and you see you have also offensive mode essentially defensive mode when they say missions that are that are prioritized in, in certain free mode missions that sort of encourage PvP are, are obviously not going to be prioritized but Defensive mode, is, as it states, it prevents lock-on from other players, and you take a little bit uh, more damage from other players. Not a significant amount towards really game-changing, but you do take a little bit more damage from other players. The reason why I really I wanted to put this in this video, because like I said, it's probably the least related to PvP. It isn't related to PvE at all, but um, it, it still does regard PvP in the sense of sort of trying to um, you know, stay away from it or defend against it. Uh, what's nice about this is if you just want to sort of explore free roam or free mode, you maybe you're trying to find collectibles for the collector role, maybe you're doing a, a local trader sale or, or even a moonshiner sale, or you're just trying to explore the map in general and you don't want to be bothered by other players, defensive mode is what you're going to want to use because, you know, essentially with defensive mode, you're not going to have sort of a player just be able to run up on you or ride by you and decide to shoot you you know with a lock on it's gonna make it a lot harder for them to be able to do that so it really discourages What's a lot of players from trying to harm you or really engage in PvP with you due to defensive mode because it's gonna be a lot harder to you know um, to fight you it's gonna be a lot more challenging and it's also going to be you know a lot more um, you know difficult to try to like I said take you out or fight you because of the whole you know lock on disabling and the fact that you're gonna take a little bit more damage but essentially when you activate defensive mode, it'll take about 30 seconds Hello, to, to become on. active on your character. If you hit down on the D-pad, if you see sort of a mini shield by your map, you'll know that you're in defensive mode. Um, I will say from personal experience, that if you're in defensive mode, I do believe that you will have less chance of being engaged in PvP. Uh, actually, just recently, unfortunately... Um, I joined a session where I was not in defensive mode. For the most part, it the game will save. Uh, if 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 you were in defensive mode when you last left Red Dead Online, the game I will pretty much save and remember that you were in defensive mode. It wasn't always like that. Uh, Rockstar eventually implemented implemented that in the game. But if you end up doing like a PvP mode, like a showdown or maybe a free mode event or even like a legendary bounty, a lot of times that'll pull you out of defensive mode, and you have to you know physically you know put yourself back in defensive mode so if you forget about that and obviously we read that online you can sometimes forget I'd say a, a main rule of thumb would be when you enter Red Dead Online just uh, just pretty much check and make sure you're in defensive mode just hit down on the d-pad see if you see that little shield by your map because 
with me just recently I joined uh, a session I was actually in armadillo and there was four uh, there, there was like a posse it ended up being like three or four and I wasn't in defensive mode and they ended up jumping me and it was pretty much a 3v1 4v1 and it was just really frustrating I didn't even want to deal with that at all but those things tend to happen you know when um, you know when you're not in defensive mode so like I said I the I would say the main rule of thumb is you know when you're in you know when you enter free mode check and make sure you're in defensive mode and the other thing is a lot of people say that this this you know defensive mode is cheap it really isn't a cheap tactic because of the fact that it's balanced it's not like passive mode in GT online where you know someone could kill you and then immediately go to passive mode and hide from you if I you know kill you before you know I'm in defensive mode before you engage me I'm immediately put out of defensive mode same thing whereas if I'm in defensive mode fighting you I also cannot lock on to you. Sure, I'll be able to take slightly more damage, but I can assure you it is slightly more damage. It is nothing significant. So defensive mode is also not really overpowering. Rockstar did a pretty good job of balancing this. But in any case, I definitely recommend being in this pretty much, like I said, at all times in free mode so that you're not... If you don't want to engage in combat in free mode, if you're not looking for a fight, you always want to be in defensive mode. So I, I pretty much use that as a rule of thumb of every time you join free roam, check and make sure you're in defensive mode. Now the second tip that I recommend for both PvP and PvE in Red Dead Online is using tonics. Now there's two ways that you can sort of obtain tonics in Red Dead Online. You can either craft them uh, at your camp with certain materials in game. As you'll see here, I'm, I'm crafting a special health cure at my camp. And the other way you can acquire tonics in Red Dead Online is through the in-game catalog. So if, if you don't have enough materials to craft certain tonics at your camp, you can go into the catalog um, and there will be a tonic section and you will be able to buy uh, a number of tonics through that section within the catalog. You also have the chances, you know, occasionally loot a tonic off of an enemy that you have killed, like an NPC, but of course that's not a very consistent way to sort of stack up on tonics. Now similarly to there being two ways to sort of, or two main ways to acquire tonics consistently, there's also two ways you can consume tonics. One way is through the satchel, and the other, and the other way, that I, which is the way that I recommend, is as you're seeing here, through the items list in your weapon wheel. So for me, I'm, I'm on PlayStation 4, so I pretty much just open up my weapon wheel and then hit square, which will allow me to go to my items list, and you'll see that I have three sections for tonics. I have a health section, which is on the far left, a stamina section which is in the middle and then it's sort of a dead eye uh, uh, tonic section on my far right and essentially those are just you know tonics that can be used to refill you know the, the cores that I just sort of uh, you know explained like the health cure for example or the health section those all those tonics in that section are gonna you know refill my uh, you know my outer health core the stamina usually will refill or well is gonna refill my um, you know my stamina outer core and then with the dead eye any that you know tonics that I have there is going to refill my you know my dead eye outer core and the reason why I recommend going through the items list and having your tonic set up in there is because you you know you can go through the satchel but going through the satchel is going to take a lot longer and in combat you want to be able to access your your tonics as quick as you can and if you're sort of you know messing around trying to find where they're at in your satchel that's not really going to benefit you and at that point it'd probably be too late to really save yourself with the tonics which is the whole point so you know I do recommend that you use the items list as I just showed you to consume your tonics you'll be able to access and use your tonics way faster than going into your satchel the Rockstar have recently with the past update the Moonshiner update made slight changes to sort of the, um, the amount of consumables or at least the timing of when you can take consumables when in PvP. If you look here, it says to improve PvP combat in Red Dead Online, tonics and consumable items can no longer be used while dead eye abilities are active while on fire or for a short period after being damaged by another player. Essentially, what it's just saying here, it, they just sort of balance it a little bit better, which I don't mind them doing. I, I'm actually happy they sort of balance it because it, it was getting a little bit ridiculous in PvP. People were popping tonics like crazy, but you can still use tonics in PvP. And they can still be beneficial, especially if you're like in a position where you're in cover. You need to refill your health real quick. You can do that. And even in PVE modes, um, you know, just when you're facing the environment, whether you're doing story missions or, you know, legendary bounties or just the environment in general, as I stated, you know, tonics can be very helpful. It's very similar to snacks in, you know, GT Online. And if you saw there, I just ate minty big game meat. If you actually season the uh, big game meat in 
uh, Red Dead Online, which can be obtained from predators in Red Dead Online, like bears, cougars, um, alligators. You can also fortify the inner core and yield a golden core for the um, your inner cores. The tonics are more the outer cores. The inner core sort of affects how fast the outer core uh, refills. So if you want to sort of fortify that it's at its highest potential, you can, uh, if you season big game meat, um, you will be able to do that as well, which also can be beneficial in combat, When, I, like I said, when refilling your outer cores. The third tip I have for you, which I would say is most important in PvP, is caulking or readying your firearm. So as you'll see here, I pulled out my volcanic pistol, and you'll see on my guy, when he aims, he sort of cocks the weapon or the firearm. Uh, one thing that's important is, and this is probably the most overlooked tip, you'll see when I switch my gun to my, sh or when I switch weapons to my shotgun, you'll see my guy also cocks the shotgun as well. And same thing with when I go to my bolt action rifle, he cocks the rifle. What I'm trying to get at here is every time you switch to a new weapon, you have to re-cock the weapon. Um, or I guess re-ready the firearm, you know, in case I'm not using the proper, you know, terminology there, but you pretty much have to cock or re-ready uh, your firearm. I uh, I will say that if you, for example, you saw if I have a pistol out or, or like maybe a, a sidearm or revolver or something like that, and I I didn't necessarily put my shotgun away. I was just holding it in my my you know my player was my character was holding it in his other hand. Uh, he will will not have to recock it at that point um, unless you obviously had to reload the the gun. But uh, once you holster a weapon or you put it back on your back, um, you essentially have to recock the weapon. And what I'm trying to get at here is why this is important is because when you're in PvP situations where you're trying to make a calculated attack and you go to switch to a weapon and you and you know you have to cock the weapon, that could really throw a curveball into you attacking another player and being successful. I've had this happen to me before where you know I switched to my shotgun, I was gonna move up on a player, and I didn't aim beforehand. I aimed when I was right in front of him and instead of me firing, I cocked my weapon instead, and what do you think he did? He fired and he killed me. So my point is, is, if you have the chance in combat, maybe you're in cover, or maybe you're making a calculated attack, make sure you aim first when you switch to another weapon before firing. Now I know there's going to be certain situations in PvP where things are going to happen too fast and you're not going to really be able to take advantage of this. But when you're making a calculated attack, definitely take you know this tip into consideration because I believe this is probably the most overlooked tip. It even took me a while to really even see that this was happening. I think it's easily overlooked, but this definitely can make a difference in combat and whether you know you 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 know kill the other player or the player kills you so definitely take this tip into consideration if you are able to in a pvp situation the fourth tip that can be both beneficial in i would say pvp and pve is utilizing ability cards or sort of creating your own ability loadout um, i also think a number of players sort of overlook this i do believe a lot of players get involved with this but um you know from my personal experience i, I have a friend who have been playing Read it online for quite some time now, like a year over a year, and I still have to push him to, you know, invest in certain ability cards. I was going to originally make this a two part tip because there was really one ability card I wanted to focus on a lot, but um, I sort of just wanted to make this into, you know, a five tip video. This is becoming way more than I really even wanted it to. This video is becoming very long, but I, there's a lot I want to cover. But in, in any case, it's, you know, I have four ability cards here, which is the max that you can own and um, there's a there's a dead eye ability um, there, there's a number of dead eye abilities you can have passive abilities I believe defensive might be another one there's even another one besides that there's like four different type of loadout cards that you can have you'll see here uh, the one that I definitely recommend that all players have and you can pretty much unlock this from as soon as you enter into Red Dead Online is the paint it black here and you'll see here I have paint it black it essentially just allows you to paint targets onto your enemies uh, if you played story mode you know how that works you can easily take out a lot of enemies or a player using this or maybe if you're hunting you're trying to get a herd of animals you can easily kill a number of animals I mean if you're trying to grind for the trader rule that could be beneficial for that so painted black I would definitely rec I'm only on tier one here you can have up to three tiers but I believe you can buy this um, this ability card as soon as you enter Red Dead Online so I definitely recommend getting that and then you see here these are just a number of other dead eye ability cards you can get but like I said I do recommend that all players have the painted black ability card because you know no matter what you're doing whether it's PvP or, or you're in a PvE situation 
you know, a lot of times when you see, even when I'm fighting the environment or NPCs, I'm using Deadeye almost constantly or very often. So I do believe that is a very important ability card to have. Another ability card that I recommend that all players have is Never Without One. Um, essentially, this allows you to sort of take almost a headshot, um, almost like wearing a bulletproof helmet in a sense, or at least with a hat, you can take, if you're wearing a hat and, you know, a bullet hits your hat, it'll protect you from one headshot, and if you're not wearing a hat, usually you'll be able to take a little bit more damage. But um, definitely recommend this one. This one will require you to be, I believe, level 46. It's uh, one of the last, if not last, ability cards that you unlock. I'm not sure with some of the newer ones that were added since the release of online, if there's a level lock on those, because I, I would have already been way past it, you know, those level locks at that point. But as far as I know, this may potentially be the last one that you unlock. But this Never Without One ability card, as you'll see that I've highlighted on the screen here, sort of the Rest in Peace Tombstone with the hat on it, I definitely recommend that everybody has that ability card applied as well. So Painted Black and Never Without One, Definitely recommend that those are the two that you pretty much have applied at all times. Now as far as the, as far as the other two ability card slots go, I would sort of recommend just interchanging them out for maybe a certain activity you're doing in the game. I'm going to give you an example here. For example, this one uh, defensive ability card that I'm going to show you here, it is called the Unblinded Eye. Uh, essentially what it does is your dead eye and eagle eye drain a little slower. For example, this could maybe be better, considering your eagle eye drains slower with this, if you're trying to maybe look for collectibles around the map or, or you're, um, you're trying to find certain herbs, it's going to require you to have eagle eye activated for, you know, um, a lot of that time. This may be ability card that you want to have applied. So there's a number of ability cards that may be, you know, beneficial in certain situations and then other situations they're not. So I would definitely recommend reserving maybe one or two slots where you can sort of interchange your ability cards out so that you're not you know um, so that you so like I said so in cer in certain situations you'll have a choice to apply a different ability card that may be more beneficial in that particular situation another example I can show you here is with this combat ability the horseman one where you deal a little more damage while on horseback essentially with that ability as well um, that might for example the free mode event uh, dispatcher where you're on horseback the majority of that time that may be an ability card that might be beneficial for a situation like that so like I said I reserve at least one or two ability card slots so where you can interchange cards out that you know depending on what situation or mode that you may be playing you know there might be an ability card that might be more beneficial for that particular mode and then maybe there might be another mode that you do where a different ability card might be more beneficial for that mode so like I said I would reserve one or two spots to sort of interchange ability cards out but overall I would definitely have pretty much the painted black and the never without one ability cards uh, applied at all times so the fifth and final combat tip I have for you in this video regarding PvP and PvE, I would say this is most important in PvP, but is utilizing the dive to sort of throw off your enemies, like I said, more importantly, other players, uh, you know, making yourself unpredictable and also countering their attacks. Um, so, see here, pretty much when you aim uh, your weapon or any weapon in Red Dead Online, uh, for me on PS4, I believe it's square, you're able to utilize your dive, and depending on which way you're pointing your uh, left joystick, you know, whether it's uh, forward, backward, left, right, that'll uh, position the direction of your dive. I do believe this, this holds a lot of importance in Red Dead Online. I believe a number of people either don't use this or overuse this. You want to sort of find a happy medium with this. The only time I really ever spam my dive is if I'm maybe getting shot at from a direction I don't know where I'm at or from where and I need to get to cover real quick. So I, I spam a dive or a bunch of dives consecutively until I'm in a, in a safe position. That's really the only time I ever overuse the dive. But other than that, you sort of want to find a happy medium between you know, using the dive to sort of throw off your enemies and, and not overusing it to make yourself really predictable. These are just a couple examples I have here of me sort of utilizing the rule, or not the rule, I, that's from GTA, but the uh, dive. You'll see there, I sort of did a little bit of a double dive there. I was trying to throw my enemy off there by, uh, or throwing that player off by, when he came up from his dive, I was trying to go down on my dive, sort of mess up his aim and then come up and try to get a quick and easy headshot. Uh, again, that's one way you can sort of try to throw off your enemies and utilize the dive to your advantage. Again, I wouldn't say really overuse it there, I just sort of used it um, just to Again, try to throw him off with his dive, mess up his aim, get a quick and easy headshot. I was able to pull it off there. This was a showdown uh, mode I, I was in. I believe it might have been plunder, but uh, I killed uh, one or two players here, and then there was a number of enemies running in. I didn't want to get caught behind the pen here, so see me sort of do a defensive 
uh, dive back after I kill this player, so just avoid getting killed by it. The, uh, the you know the enemies rushing in and then getting behind cover here so again that's sort of a, a defensive dive not really a, a offensive dive there so it could be utilized for something like that as well it's another example here in another showdown I was doing where I essentially I killed this one player who's sort of glitching around here a bit and there's another player that I, I was worried he's gonna get a headshot on me so I did a quick dive behind this rock here came up got a quick headshot did a little offensive defensive dive there just trying to stress the importance of the dive in combat like i said for most regular players this is probably already second nature and most people are used to it but at the same time like i said i just want to stress the importance of integrating the dive into your combat and and also you know you know, like i said not overusing it but not but also not on the opposite spectrum where you're not using it all you want to integrate it into your combat because it will definitely benefit you um, you know to a certain degree and you know you always want to utilize everything that Rockstar gives you in the game to your advantage and the dive is definitely one of those uh, you know options now there are another you know a number of other PvP tips and PvE tips I can sort of uh, recommend in a sense uh, as far as like if we look at you know sensitivity targeting mode um, or even like the control type for example I like to play in standard FPS 2 I think it allows you to run and gun more efficiently I also use that in GTA online but again that all comes down to perf you know personal preference you know you even have quick select that was recently added into Red Dead Online uh, you know allowing you to you know select um, you know a gun that you have prioritized just by pretty much uh, you know hitting the weapon wheel um, so you know, there, there's different things like that, but those all come down to you know personal preference. I'm not going to sit here and you know recommend what sensitivity you should have, you should have, what targeting mode you should have, what you know what control type you should have, which weapon you should have quick selected. You know, all that. That all comes down to personal, you know, preference. Uh, you know, as the bottom line. And even as far as like weapons are concerned, I would look at other videos for that. Personally, I might be comfortable with weapons that maybe you're not as comfortable with. And I haven't done as you know much in-depth testing really with these weapons. So there's definitely other videos that can probably um, you know explain sort of what weapons are better um, than I can. Just because, like I said, I haven't done as much of the in-depth testing. Uh, but sort of lastly to touch on, I really don't recommend getting involved with PvP and P. Well, yeah, it's really not PvE because PvE pretty much you're gonna get involved with, with you know from the very start. But as far as PvP is concerned, you know, player versus player. You know, as far as you know, uh, purposely getting involved with that, you know, in in like showdown modes or free mode events, I'd recommend really not pushing yourself to get involved in PvP um, until. You know, you uh, one you master these tips. You know more with I would say you know sort of practicing these tips on P you know PVE or the environment, sort of mastering these tips. But also um, until you have more of the higher advanced or higher capacity ammo as well, like slug rounds for the shotgun, high velocity rounds for like your rifle or your pistols, um, or also the uh, you know the express rounds. Typically, a lot of you know players that play a lot of PvP are going to use ammo like that. Um, there's even ammo that you can that you can craft as well. Um, I wouldn't worry about the, the, that as much. I mean, as long as you have the high velocity rounds, express rounds, you're still going to do fairly well in combat, but I definitely would not recommend getting involved in combat until you, you know, like I said, master these tips, but also, um, you know, you, you unlock more of those higher capacity rounds so that you have a better chance of obviously having success in you know with when fighting other players but in any case guys um, hope you uh, you know enjoy this video I apologize for being so long I definitely didn't intend on it being this long from the start it just there's a lot of things I really wanted to add into this you know this video overall it also took a little bit longer for me to get out just because number of personal things as well as the servers being down on Saturday just sort of put me back a little bit but I do I do hope you found this video beneficial hope you enjoyed it and as always have a great day